Hello and welcome. Uh, thanks for joining um, another uh, Crow Canyon application webinar series. <clears throat> today, or my name is Ryan. Uh, today we're going to be covering our asset management application. This is kind of a uh, follow-up to uh, to the webinar we did uh, last month on the IT help desk. Uh, but you know, don't worry if you if you didn't get a chance to attend the IT help desk one. They're not. Um, uh, they're not dependent upon each other. Our asset management application is definitely a standalone tool. Um, so we're gonna be covering that in depth today. Um, and we do have, you know, just before we get into it uh, uh, too much, I just wanna say like, we do have a couple more webinars coming up. I wanna plug and make sure we get this plug out here before I get going. Uh, we have, um, you know, best practices with uh, Joel Olson, who's an MVP coming up August 27th, as well as with our CEO, Scott Restivo. Uh, James is going to be doing, or James Recibo is going to be doing a Nitro Studio form designer piece uh, webinar at the end of August. Uh, and then I have a service request management uh, webinar coming up in September. Now, we're going to touch, uh, I wanted to bring this up because we're going to be touching on the forms piece a little bit today in uh, the asset management application. And assets kind of tie into our employee service portal with service request management, that webinar in September. So, uh, just to keep that in the back of your mind as we move forward. Um, but with that being said, let's let's plow ahead and take a look at the asset management tool. So first thing I like to point out here is that Crow Canyon's colors are blue and white. Therefore, our demo site is blue and white. Now, keep in mind this is SharePoint. Uh, these work on on-premise Office 365, both the classic and the modern UI. Um, so if you have uh, certain site pages that you're using and you want to inherit that branding onto these sites, you're more than welcome to. We also have a branding tool as a part of our Nitro Studio, which is a good segue into Nitro Studio. All of our applications come out a certain way out of the box, asset tracking, IT help desk. <clears throat> We've also done you know, a few webinars on onboarding and purchase requests. So these, these sites are templated and ready to be deployed into your SharePoint tenancy or farm. Uh, but what they do is they run on our Nitro Studio. And what Nitro Studio is, it's our forms, it's our uh, it's our set of tools that we use to create these applications. It's a forms piece, it's a workflow piece, it's a reporting tool. Basically everything that we need to create our application, we give to you as a piece of these sites. Why I like it is because it gives you um, the keys to the car in the sense that if you need to make any changes to the application, you have the full power to do so, right? You're not locked in, you're not pigeonholed to say like, you have to do it this way, that way, or, or uh, adhere to our requirements, right? You kind of have free reign once it's deployed within your guys's SharePoint space. Okay, so our asset landing page. Tiles and dials web part right here at the top, again, is another example of the Nitro Studio. Uh, it just shows you active assets, software assets, vendors, and that's going to be kind of the underlying theme as we move through um, uh, move through the asset management application is that we have a few main lists that we circle around. Assets, software assets, vendors, and contracts. And the idea is to be able to jump from list to list as seamlessly as possible as uh, with as few clicks as possible. So this landing page is just kind of a exactly that, right? A dashboard, you can see expiring warranties, warranties, checked out assets, and uh, finally your assets. Now these web parts are, uh, again, a part of the Nitro Studio. I, I know I already sound like a broken record, but uh, Nitro is heavily involved in these applications, and this is one of our list view web parts. But what it does is gives you the ability to view different list views all from one dashboard, right? Um, so let's drill down into uh, an actual asset here. So, you know, those familiar, really familiar with SharePoint um, uh, knows that there's a few different ways to view a SharePoint list item, in this case, an asset, right? So there's the new form, there's the display form, and then there's the edit form. Well, in our display form, what we've done is we've given you some uh, uh, workflow abilities through what we call custom actions. Custom actions uh, with this little plus uh, with the circle around it, basically it's a manually invoked workflow. Meaning like if, if you're in a situation where you have a, a bank of loaners, uh, a set of laptops that you lend out, lend out to employees for weeks at a time or months at a time, but they're gonna be recollected uh, at a later date, basically what you can do is you can set this up to be checked in or checked out to that 
uh, individual person and then track the history. It's just a nice way to fire off the workflow without having to do it, uh, <clears throat> or a better way to say it is at a time of your choosing. Well, let's drill down into the, uh, the edit version of the form. Okay. So now as this loads, I'm just going to kind of talk about it while, while it's coming up here. But basically what we've done is we've made um, asset type right here, this column, a lookup to a separate list. So what we can do with it being a lookup is have our um, uh, certain columns like title, uh, category, make, description, pull from that other list. So it helps you cut down on like duplicate data entry. So keep an eye on a few of these columns. Let's let's say description and make. You know, keep an eye on these two, because when I change this asset type, let's say to an iPhone, the information is going to update appropriately. So this asset type list is another list in this site, and all it's, it does is giving us the ability to refer back to that list when we're adding in new assets. It's a really nice time saver. You know, I'm not a huge fan of duplicate data entry, so whatever we can do to cut down on it, um, we try to. Now, the, the next column I want to point out here is this contract service date. Now, what this contract service date is, it's a it's a reference again to one of our other lists, right? I talked about the, the main list and the asset site uh, a few minutes ago, contracts being one of them. Now, what contract service date is, it's, it's a way for you to send notifications to the responsible person for this particular contract. Think of it as like a contract renewal uh, notification. So you can set it up to say, hey, this contract's coming due next year, and I want to notify Ryan that uh, he needs to do something with this contract. 90 days out, 60 days out, 30 days out. This is where you're going to define that time cadence, and or, or you, you can define that time cadence, and this is the column that we're going to be reading from. So when you have question or when you have uh, <laughs> that schedule is kind of set in stone, it's basically set and forget. Um, and then that person is going to be notified, like I said, at the time cadence of your choosing. Now, if you do have any questions, uh, we do have the questions box in the uh, in the go to webinar here. So if anything does pop up, feel free to shoot those over. Uh, uh, James Recibo is manning the question box. So if you have anything, don't hesitate. Okay, so location and owner. Uh, what's nice about this, and it's kind of our first chance to talk about it, is that this employee column is a people picker column. So it integrates in with your Office 365 environment, right? We can start typing in Scott's name and we're able to add Scott to this asset. And he is now the owner of the asset. So the goal here, and it's gonna be kind of a reoccurring theme and not only in this webinar, but in more webinars moving forward with Crocanian is that we want you to take advantage of your Office 365 environment, right? Be able to take, uh, be able to take full advantage of what you're currently using whether that is just SharePoint or Outlook or all the way down into Teams, right? Being able to select these people and apply them to this column is one of those. <clears throat> now, department, location, building, room and rack number. Again, these are all configurable. I'm going to touch on the forms piece at the end of the uh, at the end of the demo here, but do know that these are configurable and you can come in and capture more information if need be. Okay, so history and finance. Again, pretty straightforward, um, invoice number, maintenance cost, uh, current value, uh, vendor. Uh, again, that's another tied to one of our lists, right? Vendor is another list in our asset management application, and it's a way to tie uh, a vendor to an asset. Um, what's nice here and uh, for the invoice number is that we can actually populate these columns from third-party databases. So if you have things living in like QuickBooks or something like that, we actually can update those SharePoint columns again to cut down on duplicate data entry. Uh, you can keep an image of an asset. Uh, and then the computer tab is interesting because what this tab is, is it's dependent upon the asset type column. Remember that asset type column we talked about in the beginning here, being able to pull in different information associated with this lookup to that list. Now, this also gives us a, a kind of a peek into the permissions configurabilities of the forms, right? So we keep an eye on this computer tab. If I change this, let's say to a projector, that tab's gonna go away because there is no need for a computer tab for a projector, right? But if I come back to the, uh, the desktop, you can see that computer tab pops back up and we can start to add things associated with that desktop operating uh, system, machine type, computer type. And then um, the connection to our fourth list, installed software. So you have the ability to relate software assets to your hardware assets. 
can come in and select different software assets, software licenses, and then keep a work log as well. Now, what's nice here about uh, this installed software is that, again, it's its own list. It's kind of our version of repeating rows, uh, if you those are familiar with InfoPath. So it gives you the ability to create or attach multiple uh, list items to a secondary, multiple secondary list items to your primary list. In this case, our primary list is assets. We're going in and we're pulling items from our secondary list, which is installed soft or software assets, and we have the ability to create the connection between the two of them, all from one common interface. So we talked about check-in and check-out a little bit with the custom actions in, in the display form um, on this particular uh, asset, but you can also manage that from a tab here internally. Um, so it's like I said, you can check out an asset to a person for a determined amount of time. Uh, we've also seen other, you know, some of our customers really take advantage of this from like a notification perspective as well. Hey, your asset's overdue, it needs to be returned. And just uh, setting up using our workflow tool to remind uh, that person who the asset's assigned to that, hey, it needs to be, you know, it's either overdue or it needs to be returned at this date. Much like we did with the contract service date, you know, uh, where our custom action piece is a manually invoked workflow. We still have that automated workflow process, that set and forget workflow where we can notify, send emails, update items, create items based on triggers. Um, and this date column is one of them being able to notify that person that an asset's coming due uh, on their loaner. And then right here, you can see the history, who had it, how long they had it for, um, you know, et cetera. So this related items tab, it's kind of like a snapshot overview of the assets life with the company. Now, I chose to show this version of the asset tool uh, because you can do things like relate tickets to an asset. You know, if you go with the ticketing system, you can automatically relate tickets to an asset. It could be manuals, it could be warranties, it could be that history we talked about, uh, change requests and problems, uh, contracts as well. So it's kind of everything pertaining to this asset can live within one uh, tab in this form. What's nice about this, going back to what I was talking about in the software assets, is that we're actually tying to separate lists here. So in this case, we have a contracts list. We're seeing that this Dell desktop is a part of a lease agreement. But what's cool here is that we can actually drill down into this contract and see the form specifically for this lease agreement. So instead of having to X out of the list that I'm in and going and finding that contract over here in my, my contracts list, what I can do is pull it up straight from the form that I'm in. And you can see like that responsible entity, it, it was me, uh, the vendor that it's linked to, which I'll get to in a second, but also all of the assets related to that particular lease agreement. And the same principle, the same process goes with the vendor. You know, I want to be able to navigate to the vendors list as easy as possible. So you click on the vendor. In this case, we're opening up in a new screen. I mean, we kind of give you the different options. We have a pop-up box for contracts. We did a new tab for vendors, but it gives you the idea on the flexibility. And you can see things like vendor info. And then again, related items. So just like related items was a snapshot of the assets life, you could see the vendor's life with your particular country or country, sorry, company, uh, whether that's contracts or, you know, assets that are specific with that vendor to, to your guys' environment. And then again, if we click on this asset here at the top, we're right back where we started with that same asset that we opened up and started the demo with. So again, <clears throat> the idea here is let's cut down on clicks. Let's make the connections between, um, all of our pertinent lists in this particular application to make it as easy as possible from to jump from one to the other. Um, and, and that's what's nice here about our particular tool set. Now I'm going to kind of shift more towards the um, Nitro discussion. Um, what's cool about Nitro Studio is that it sits in an actual SharePoint site. Now we offer Nitro across your entire tenancy. Uh, that's that's kind of a separate conversation if you're interested in like a form creation or a workflow tool for your tenancy. We have a few webinars coming up, but you're more than welcome to reach out to us um, and, and look at Nitro on a more uh, farm-wide or tenant-wide basis. But back to the point of you know, Nitro being installed at a site level, what's cool is that when we create forms or when we create workflows, they're list specific. So they're not tied to any individual user kind of like um, those familiar with Power Apps. You know, if you log in, you create a Power App that's under that user's name. 
Um, so if that person leaves the company or moves on, changes titles, you know, it, we, we're a little limited with what we can do from the design and flexibility of that power app or that form. But what's cool about Nitro is that we're making the form directly in the site, we're making a change of the form directly into the list in the site that we're in. So if I pull up my forms tool here <clears throat> and I select assets, we're going to pull up the form designer specifically for the assets list and we can come in and make changes. Now, for those familiar with us uh, or those who've seen a webinar with us before, I'm going to sound a little bit like a broken record here, but the idea behind our forms tool is it's kind of like three levels. And in, in my in my eyes, I see it as a three kind of a three three tiered process of what you can do with our form designer. The first is UI look and feel. The second is like SharePoint standard uh, functionality, columns, permissions. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the third is developer heavy tools, develop the developer side. So the first piece, um, look and feel. Now we have a layouts and themes. You can change the colors on the tabs. You can change the um, colors of uh, the background color of each form. Let's see if I can find something not obnoxious here. So you can make this form look and feel uh, specific to your to your company, right? We also have up here in the global settings, you can create your own themes. So you can change font colors, you can change uh, uh, label settings, column value settings, the colors, the size, the padding, et cetera. You can really take this and then apply it. You can save the theme and apply it to any form within the site that you're in. Now you can also do things like, uh, if you like the two column layout, paint it to a vertical, you can go two column and you can go all the way down to four column. So the form can, that each individual tab can feel its own particular way. The same with adding tabs, we try to make this as easy as possible. Um, being able to drag and drop tabs, uh, being able to drag and drop tables in a tab, you can actually drag and drop controls into different uh, sections in a table, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then you can come in and tweak the table and the cell properties, much like we talked about in the form or in the, the form design, right? Being able to say, okay, I want my cell to be padded like this. I want the color and uh, color scheme to be this, or my column layout to be, you know, this color, that color, whatever. Complete control for how these forms look. Now, when it comes to uh, functionality, right? SharePoint columns in the list. That's essentially what we're displaying on these forms. All of your columns are available here on the left-hand side. You can drag them, drop them into a form, just like I showed you with the table, but you can make them your own. Now, what's nice is again, that we're writing this form directly into the assets list and you can create columns <clears throat> from the form designer. So instead of having to go to the asset list directly and create a new column, I can actually do it right from the form interface create a new column, the column gets created and I can add it straight into the form. Another cool thing that we can do is actually edit the column settings again from the form designer. So this location column is one that's been pre-created. Over here on the right hand side, I have the edit button and I can come in and make changes to these column settings again without having to leave my form designer interface. <clears throat> now, excuse me, you can also do things now going down Kind of the next step, the this, this SharePoint um, kind of standard side is having unique permissions on tabs and columns. You know, who can see a tab, who can see a column, show, hide, or read based on, you know, users and groups, unique conditions. You can base it on the column. Show column C if column A equals this. Show column D if column A equals that. So you have the ability to really make the forms can, as configurable as you want. And then once you have kind of a form set, ready to go, like I'm gonna use this form multiple times across my SharePoint site. You can actually come to this manage forms button here. I'm gonna continue without save so I don't break anything. And you can export out form settings and then re-import those settings into a list of your choosing. So it cuts down again, going back to duplicate, you know, data entry or, or duplicate work. It just cuts down on that, cuts down on the time span of having to recreate forms and lists, et cetera. Now the last piece, uh, the developer side, I'm not gonna spend too much time here, but basically you can inject custom JavaScript into a form, custom CSS. We also have the ability to populate SharePoint columns from external data columns um, and uh, uh, autofill user information. We kind of talked about being able to select people there, but um, the developer heavy side, if you want more information there, please reach out to us. Uh, we'd be happy to schedule a time and talk about those pieces in more depth. We'll really, 
any piece of the forms or the Nitro Studio, if you, you're interested in that, as well as the assets tool, don't hesitate to reach out uh, uh, for a conversation. Now, just wrapping, I just want to put a bow on this because we're coming up on the uh, the 20 minute mark and I'd like to get everyone out of here by, uh, by the bottom of the hour. Um, the application admin center where I navigated to the Nitro Studio is only available to the people who have appropriate permission that goes for Nitro as well. So we want to make sure that, uh, you know, people are only going to see what they have access to. So this app admin center, again, is going to be for site admins or really whoever you team access. And that goes uh, uh, the same for the people who are doing the making changes in Nitro. You know, and then you're not going to give that to your end users, maybe not even your technicians who are making changes to the assets. But uh, again, that that permission structure, who who you want to see what is entirely up to you guys. Well, you know, that's all I have. Um, you know, if you're interested, like I said, if you're interested in learning more or doing a more personalized demo, please feel free to reach out to us. I'd be happy to um, I'd be happy to. Um, uh, to, to do a more personalized demo for you. I do see a question in here about if this is for on-prem only and definitely not. This is um, Office 365 as well as on-premise and that is both in the classic and the modern UI um, for um, uh, Office 365 2016. I can't remember if 2019, I'm sorry, 2019 classic and modern. I can't remember if 2016 has the modern or not, but um, you know, all versions of SharePoint is the best way to describe it. 2013, 2016, 2019, SharePoint Online, Classic and Modern. Um, mobile compatible, um, you know, it, these, all of these forms are um, mobile responsive, so they will scale down. Now, if you're using the modern UI in, in SharePoint, you can actually leverage the SharePoint app to pull these forms up. Well, <clears throat> you can pull these forms up through the, through the SharePoint app uh, whether you're using classic on-prem or modern or the modern UI, it's up to you. The modern UI will actually open up the form within the app. But like I said, these are browser based and mobile responsive. So they will scale down as you can see here. Um, so from a mobile perspective, absolutely. Um, can you do a network connected asset discovery? We, you know, I'm going to say 90% of the time with our customers, do we do um, some sort of asset discovery, whether it's SCCM or Land Sweeper? But yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd say those two are the most common. But if you're using a network discovery tool, I think another customer of ours uses AirWatch. Um, there is an integration possible there, absolutely. Any other questions that are top of mind? Anything else that you can think of? Okay, great. Well, I don't see anything filtering in. Um, again, guys, uh, thanks again for attending. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, we do have the, you know, I would really uh, encourage you to come to our best practices for overcoming the issues paralyzing your migration from InfoPath. Um, for those of you who uh, who are aware, maybe who those of you who are not aware, InfoPath is going away, being deprecated. Um, so Joel Olson, who's an MVP, and Scott Restivo, who's the CEO of Crocany, are going to do a real nice, a really nice piece on, you know, migrations from InfoPath to whatever version of uh, SharePoint that you're on. And again, don't hesitate to to reach out to us if you have more questions, you would like to see a demo, and we do offer trials of these applications as well. I'd be happy to to talk to you in more detail what that looks like. Appreciate it. Well, thanks everyone for joining, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Everyone have a nice day. Bye now.